All right. Um, this is an interview at Division of Military Naval Affairs Headquarters, Latham, New York. It is the 5th of June, 2003, approximately 10.50 a.m. Interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? Now, uh, my name... Full uh, name. Before, before I was married. Yes. Mata, M-A-T-A, Elizabeth Barth. Okay. And I was born, shall I admit it? <laughs> <laughs> That's up to you. That's up to you. <laughs> no, no, I don't, I don't hesitate to brag about it. Uh, March 16th, 1920. And where were you born? Granville, Illinois. Okay. Um, what was your educational background prior to entering service? Well, I went to country school in Illinois. But when I was in high school, we moved to Iowa. Mm -hmm. So I depended entirely the rest of the, my education on the state of Iowa. Mm -hmm which meant when I graduated from high school in 1937, I went to work to University of Iowa for one year on a fee exemption, and I didn't make the fee exemption, which meant, I mean, I couldn't renew it. Mm -hmm. So then I worked for a year and got enough money to go into nurses training at the University of Iowa. Mm -hmm. And when I graduated, or when I was in my senior year, uh, Pearl Harbor. Okay. Could I ask you about that? Do you remember where you were and you, what your reaction was when you heard about Pearl Harbor? I was working mm -hmm. because it was a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And it was a surprise. But, uh, and I was working in the hospital because that's how you got graduated mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, on hand experience. Mm -hmm. That's why, after you had paid the first year of tuition, from then on, you really earned your keep. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, why did you decide to enlist? Never crossed my mind not to. Mm -hmm. And, in fact, I registered for the uh, Navy, and I couldn't pass their physical. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I thought, well, that's the end. I'll have to go to work. My sister lived in Illinois at the time, and that's why I went to work in Illinois rather than Iowa. And this was in September that I finished, and in December I joined the Army. Mm -hmm. Okay, where uh, did you go for? From there. Yes. Well, Fort Custer, Michigan, mm -hmm. because the state of I or the United States is divided one side of the Mississippi or the other. Mm -hmm. So if I'd have stayed in Iowa, I'd have gone west. But as it was, I went to uh, Battle Creek, Michigan, and that was the. Uh, or the OCS for uh, military police. But I only worked there four months mm -hmm. because by that time the uh, all the troops were in Tennessee that were going to uh, well, D-Day. Mm -hmm because it was about 15 months before D-Day. Mm -hmm. 
And of course what we got was all those hillbillies out of the south and getting all the infectious diseases and things Where did you like go that. in Tennessee? Tullahoma. And that was Camp Forest. Mm -hmm. And uh, I enjoyed every minute of it. So you worked with a lot of infectious diseases there, you said? Well, it's like this measles mump, and I okay. already had them. I never had to worry about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing how many uneducated, how many simple people got drafted. And I, I, I enjoyed every minute of it. Mm -hmm. And we had one day, we worked a seven day week. And we had one day off a month. And we'd either go to Nashville, where all the country music was, or uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now at that time, there were women there, but I didn't in any way get involved in that way. Mm -hmm. But it really was interesting. Mm -hmm. All the while I was in the United States, I had no complaints. Mm -hmm. Now did you have, were you an officer? The no. nurses went in as first, second lieutenant. Okay. Did you get any other type of training at all or outside of your nurse training? <laughs> like, a, like a basic training? Any basic, military basic training? <laughs> to tell you the truth, I did. Huh. But it, not until all the troops were gone. Oh, okay. So, so I went to Fort Rucker, Alabama uh, for a month. Mm -hmm. And then so you did your basic training after you had been in the house, working the hospitals in after Tennessee? After I'd been in for oh. all that time. Uh -huh. However, just as soon as I had basic training, I went to Illinois and got ready to go overseas. So I went from, uh, well, to Miles Standish. And I went to England. Mm -hmm. Now, how and did you go over to England? On was it a troop the, ship or a plane? Or? Well, there were six general hospitals mm -hmm. on that, but they were all medical personnel. And uh, I ought to re have rehearsed this. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Just what you remember. Where the Beatles came. Oh, oh, Liverpool. 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 That's where I went into Liverpool. And then from now, there we... Now, excuse me, did you go on a... Was it a convoy or the single ship? It was a single ship. Mm -hmm. So all hospital units were in this one ship? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And since that time, Ed and I went over to uh, where I was stationed. Where was it? Harrogate. That's just like uh, uh, Saratoga. That's right. Mm -hmm. So there was so many similarities. And uh, it was a general hospital. And on one side of the uh, road was the Canadians, and the other side of the road was the Americans. And uh, you really didn't come in contact much beyond your unit. Mm -hmm. What was your unit to, that you were assigned 82nd to? Eighty-second General Hospital. No, 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 no. I went over with the one fifteenth General Hospital. Now, what kind of things did you do in this hospital? What most of them were further away from London, mm -hmm. so it was relatively safe. Mm -hmm. And the only time that we had airplanes up that far was uh, what is it? Tell me. Huh? Yeah, the yeah, yeah, but you you didn't 
weren't really aware of it much. But and also with a lot of uh, children, and that had nothing to do with us. Mm -hmm. But that was a safe, fairly safe haven. Mm -hmm. So that I really never had to worry about that until uh, Battle of the Bulge. Mm -hmm. Now, did you receive wounded from the D-Day and afterward in your hospital? Well, it's a little too far north because uh, okay, they, what well, they tried to do was get them as home as fast as uh -huh, they could. Uh -huh. So who did you work, who were some of your patients up where you were? Then? Well, to tell you the truth, <laughs> once you remember the moment, uh, trench foot and stuff oh, like okay. that, uh -huh. which <laughs> they didn't worry about. All they wanted to do is clear up their problem mm -hmm. and send them back to the front. Mm -hmm. So you didn't get a lot of wounded? No, troops. not particularly. But uh, we were busy. Goodness mm -hmm. knows they were busy. And probably uh, maybe I got to London a half a dozen times. Mm -hmm. But, uh, did, did you get a lot of uh, <clears throat> emergency uh, surgery, like uh, you know, people with needed appendectomies or you know? Not particularly, sure? because a lot of that stuff was done in the uh, station hospitals. Uh -huh. But where I was was a general hospital. Okay. Did you uh, handle civilians also, or strictly military? No. Strictly military and strictly Americans. And also I went on detached service where they, what was further down, and what those patients were, were those paratroopers, when they jumped off the, for D-Day, mm -hmm. they were paralyzed, they were in awful shape. But you know, if they got a nurse around, they'll put them to work. <laughs> this was in a different general hospital, too. Yeah, it was, a, it was still American in general hospital. Mm -hmm. I never really worked in any place except general hospital. But this was in the 82nd, right? 82nd. General hospital. No, to tell you, that, shall I get to that next? <laughs> I got moved around a little bit, and I got sent to the 82nd General Hospital, and that's where I met my husband. Mm -hmm. And that was in uh, almost Wales. You see, it was further down. Mm -hmm. What kind of cases did you handle there? Were they more of uh, men coming in from the front lines that had been wounded? No, or? we were getting ready to go over to France uh -huh. because by that time the war was over in Europe. Uh -huh. And then since he was, uh, had been over twice, to, first he went to Ireland, they'd come back for, to go to OCS, so that he had a lot of points to get home, mm -hmm. and when it come time to come at home, he got home a week, two weeks before I did. Okay. But so he was he worked a, in a hospital unit also. He was a uh, registrar, mm -hmm. and he was from New York. That's how I ended up here. Mm -hmm. But uh, and I didn't get married until I got home. Now you, you ended up in this, your 82nd General Hospital ended up going into France? Yes, because we were going to the Pacific. Uh -huh. So that that's how I end, uh, was in France for six months. Now this was after the end of the war in Europe though? Yeah, that's What kind right. of cases did you handle there? Well, just everything. 
you know, there must have been a lot of uh, packing up to, to go to the States at that point since the war was over? Or? No, because we were getting ready to go to the, uh, yeah, right. to the Pacific. Okay. And uh, what we had uh, in uh, northern France, See all the troops. They had names of cigarettes. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> that's right. Lucky Strike and Paul Mall. That's and right. And uh, no, he was on the move all the time. Mm -hmm. However, I was in one hospital where they spoke. 23 different languages. They were all displaced persons. So you all were, from Central or Middle or Central Europe. Mm -hmm. Were a lot of these people from that had been in concentration camps or just refugees? Refugees. Mm -hmm. And speaking all kinds of languages. Did you ever handle any of the Americans that had been POWs? In your hospital? Well, when I was in Tennessee before I went over, I never worked there. But what we had there was prisoners of war from Europe, Germans. Oh, you had Germans in Tennessee, huh? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But in I Europe, did. you didn't have any American POWs in the hospital? That you can recall? Not that I remember. Okay. They didn't, weren't sick, most of them. Mm -hmm. But I can remember we ate the same food that they did and the, the conditions under which they, they had, they were fed was pathetic. Mm -hmm. But we were always treated very well. I had no complaints, whatever. Okay, so um, how did you, do you recall how you felt when you heard about the death of President Roosevelt? I was still in England. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a surprise, that was for sure. Mm -hmm. So you were in France when you heard about the uh, dropping of the atomic bombs on Japan. How, what was your reaction the to The war that? didn't last. But well, yes, you were, you were in France. That yeah. Time, in Marseille. Yeah, it was, a, it was How did the you feel best you... thing that happened to me. Mm -hmm. What meant I didn't have to go to the Pacific. Mm -hmm. Because we did worry about that. Because when uh, I was on basic training, uh, a lot of people, nurses from the Pacific were there. Can you imagine that, going to basic training after you've been overseas? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But that's the way the Army works. Uh -huh. You never know what you're gonna, what's going to happen. Yeah. Now, uh, when did you return to the United States? <laughs> Should I tell them? The 12th of December. Brooklyn Harbor, this was. Uh -huh. And the 16th of December, I was a civilian. Uh -huh. And got discharged from Des Moines, Iowa. You, That's did, how did fast you, it happened. Did huh? you want to get out of the service or you had no choice? They, they just... Well, I don't think they, there was any alternative. Uh -huh. Had my three years in, they didn't need, them any, need us anymore. Uh -huh. And I was happy. But it left you with, what do you do with your life from then on? Uh -huh. So I didn't think that, I never quite caught into the idea of New York. However, this first lieutenant come out to see me 
then I come to see him. But however, before I settled down, I uh, got me a job in Texas. Going to check that out. But I shouldn't have done it because I was only down there three months. <laughs> I got married. Did he follow you been down here there? Ever since? Huh? Did your uh, husband to be follow you down there? Or? Oh no. He he went to work for the state of New York out of high school, mm -hmm. so he had a job waiting for him. No, I. I had no business being down there, but you know, I was checking everything out. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think uh, being in service, do you think it had any effect on your life or changed your life in any it way? It changed it completely. In what ways? Well, why else would I end up in New York State? <laughs> <laughs> See, I grew up during the Depression, and in order to get into nurses' training, I needed a little money. Mm -hmm. And I worked for $5 a week as a domestic in Des Moines. So, I've just been lucky all the time. Did you ever uh, join any veterans' organizations? All of them. All of them, okay. <laughs> Uh, that's how I met Ed. He he was in the reserves, but it was his wife that I knew. Mm -hmm. I never would have known him. Mm -hmm. Right? Probably so. Now, did you continue in the nursing field once you got out of the service? I've been quitting work all the time. I went to work uh, for the state of New York. However, I did a little sewing, a little, I wasn't going to work in nursing, mm -hmm. but I was, didn't have a very fortunate, uh, uh, what would you call it, anyway. When I found out I was going to have to work, I went to uh, uh, back to nursing. Mm -hmm. And where I went to work was uh, the State Epileptic Hospital in Western New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I went to University of Rochester on the GI Bill, and uh, they didn't want to give me Saturdays off because I wanted to work and go to school at the same time. Mm -hmm. Therefore, then I went to work at the State uh, Tuberculosis Hospital because that's where my husband worked. And in order to go to school, Rochester is about 30 miles from uh, Mount Morris. And uh, of course, he had to take me. But I, I was driving and I could have gone by myself, but it worked out just fine. And that's how we came to Albany because. He got his uh, associate degree in accounting, so that when they built the mall, mm -hmm. uh, the first building to be occupied was Department of Motor Vehicles, and that's where he got his job, mm -hmm. and that's where he went. And then. Uh, I came down, I thought I was going to work again, but you know, nurses, they don't quit. <laughs> I noticed you started, you worked at the VA hospital in Albany? Well, there, uh, why did I go, oh, you see, I, I retired from the state because uh, 
I had enough uh -huh. to keep my rights as to retire from uh -huh. the state. Uh -huh. And then I was reading a Sunday paper uh, and it said on there, VA is hiring part-time nurses. <laughs> so I did. I worked part-time at the VA. And I'm glad we did because Ed and I both depend on the uh, VA completely. Mm -hmm. How long did you work at the hospital? The well, they gave me credit. That's the, That was the trick. They gave me credit for my three years of service. Uh -huh. and, uh, and I worked just part-time. And I retired from there, what year? 1982. So you see, I haven't been working for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Did you did you ever stay in contact with anyone that you were in a service with? Next to your outside of your husband. <laughs> <laughs> I get Christmas cards from the girl that lived across the hall from me mm -hmm. in uh, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And uh, she got married while she was still in the army. Mm -hmm. Had a had a nice family. However, her husband went off so, with somebody else. Yeah. But and he's long gone. But she's still there, and she sends me Christmas cards. And another one I had kept contact at Christmas time was a Canadian. She was working in New York at the time that she enlisted. But once the war was over, she went back to Canada. Mm -hmm. But I haven't heard from her lately. And I try to keep track, but you get old, people forget you. Mm -hmm. How about telling us about these two pictures? Oh. Oh, whoop, I'm sorry. If you hold it up, Wayne can catch that on the camera. Okay, when and where was that taken? It says on here, 1943. And that's in Tennessee. And the, that was a station hospital. And that is one of the, uh, what do you call it? Barracks, I barracks. guess you call it. And mm -hmm. that is just a dress, not a uniform. Oh, you didn't have a uniform at that oh, point? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, it looks like a uniform. Yeah. yeah. It's a uniform dress. Oh, uniform oh, dress. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Well, you had to buy it. The, they didn't supply it to you? You had to well, buy your own? Well, you, you got a, a uniform. Mm -hmm. But However, when I was in Michigan, I uh, bought a custom-made one. I think officers had to pay for their uniforms, didn't they? Or no? Well, you were allowed $250, I think. Mm -hmm. Or there was something, anyway. That's asking me to remember <laughs> far back. How about this one? That is the uniform. But that's taken in Reims, France in 1945. Mm -hmm. The war is over. Mm -hmm. That's The 82nd General Hospital went to this eight, uh, it says ch jacket tailor made. Oh, yes, that's the Eisenhower jacket. Oh yes. So I had to hire. I had to buy that one. Uh huh. But it was French made, and it was very nice. And that's the one I probably wore the most once I got it. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for your Cheers. interview. Thank you.